Today, more than half of the world's population lives in cities, and climate change is moving between two extremes, longer dry periods and heavier rain events. City planners are working to secure water for population needs, flora, and fauna, and at the same time, protect the city from floods. Due to the high water demand, no city can be totally self-sufficient when it comes to its drinking water resources. They are increasingly dependent on water abstraction from surrounding regions, which, as a consequence, also suffer from water shortages. While cities grow and expand, surface ceiling increases and the natural green spaces will diminish. This results in less evaporation, cooling effect and infiltration in the city, and to higher temperatures, thus leading to an urban heat island. This can adversely affect human health and cause discomfort, respiratory problems, heat strokes, and a rise in heat-related mortality. From 2001 to 2010, between 380 and 1,300 Berlin citizens died each year because of heat, which is predicted to occur more frequently in the future. Water scarcity and urban heat island effects also exert an impact on urban flora and fauna. The aquatic environment will be adversely affected by higher water temperatures and lower water levels. During drought periods, the urban drinking water supply may reach a critical point which will impact all water usage sectors competing for this scarce resource. Schon wieder hat es in Deutschland im Frühjahr zu wenig geregnet. Die Böden sind in vielen Regionen zu trocken. Vor allem im Norden und Osten deuten sich erneut Ernteverluste an. Die Angst vor den Folgen eines dritten Dürrejahrs ist groß. Auf riesigen Flächen vertrocknen unsere Wälder und 2019 warnt das Umweltbundesamt erstmals vor Streit ums Trinkwasser. Rainwater in cities is usually channeled into lakes or rivers, thus contributing to a higher pollution load of these bodies of water. During heavy rainfalls, sewer overflows and the first flush from the city's surfaces might cause fish mortality in lakes and rivers. This happens especially during the hot summer months when the oxygen level in the water drops due to high temperatures and biological activity. Flood events can also cause damage to buildings and infrastructure and endanger human life. To drive the world towards more sustainability and to protect the planet, the United Nations developed 17 Sustainable Development Goals which address the social, economic, and environmental sectors. Goal 6 is about clean water and sanitation for all. Some of the outcome-oriented targets include safe and affordable drinking water, access to sanitation and hygiene, improvement of water quality, wastewater treatment, and safe reuse. EU legislation allowed and encouraged water reuse through two instruments, the Water Framework Directive and the Urban Wastewater Treatment Directive. In 2020, the new regulation on minimum requirements for water reuse for agricultural irrigation entered into force. The aim is to encourage greater use of reclaimed water and to alleviate water scarcity. The new rules will apply from June 26, 2023 and are expected to stimulate and facilitate water reuse in the EU. The EU Floods Directive establishes a framework for the assessment and management of flood risks 
to reduce the negative consequences of flooding on all aspects of life. Cities started diverting rainwater and wastewater into the sewerage system about 100 years ago. This was a great achievement at that time, keeping the city dry and preventing the spread of waterborne diseases. Today, the combined disposal of rainwater and wastewater is causing many problems in cities, such as overloading sewers during peak rainfalls and subsequent overflow of untreated wastewater into the environment. When cities were growing, this problem was already known. Therefore, a separate sewer system for rainwater was built in the outer districts. Since the city center is densely built, it became too costly to build a second sewer for rainwater. Instead, large rainwater retention basins were constructed underground to retain the mixture of rainwater and wastewater and discharge the flow to the sewage treatment plant at a slowed rate. The two separate sewer systems are also not perfect, and sewer overflows during heavy rainfalls can also occur. In addition, they have no positive impact on the microclimate or water quality. Pollution from sealed surfaces still finds its way into surface water bodies, thus impacting their quality. Therefore, polluted stormwater needs to be treated prior to its discharge. Today, many cities are steering towards becoming sponge cities as a new urban model for flood management. This can alleviate the city's water shortages and urban heat island effects and improve the ecological environment and biodiversity by absorbing, harvesting, or infiltrating rainwater on site. In order to relieve the rainwater sewers and surface water bodies and reduce the drinking water demand, the City of Bremen is funding the installation of rainwater and grey water treatment systems with a subsidy of up to 5,000 euros. In many cities in Germany, a rainwater fee is collected for the discharge of rainwater into the municipal sewer. The annual rainwater fee in Berlin amounts to 1 euro and 81 cents per square meter of connected surfaces. The Berlin Water Act stipulates an infiltration requirement for new constructions. Rainwater should remain on property and be infiltrated through an active soil layer. If this is not possible, the authority sets a maximum discharge volume. To regulate the quality of recycled rainwater and grey water, the state of Berlin laid down quality requirements for recycled water use in buildings in 1995. In addition, the FBR information sheet H202 provides the technical basis for the installation and operation of grey water recycling systems in buildings. Water recycling can also be expanded to include food production from recycled water and open new opportunities to urban farming. In the Roof Water Farm project in Berlin, vegetables, fruits, and fish were successfully cultivated and found safe for consumption using recycled grey water and black water. <laughs>